Cecil Blunt DeMille was an American filmmaker. Between 1913 and 1956, he made 70 features, both silent and sound films. He is acknowledged as a founding father of the Hollywood film industry, the most commercially successful producer-director in cinema history. DeMille began his career as a stage actor in 1900. One of his first acting jobs was in 1905 at the historic Elitch Theater in Denver, Colorado. He later moved to writing and directing stage productions, some with Jesse Lasky, who was then a vaudeville producer. Demolet's first film, The Squaw Man, was also the first feature film shot in Hollywood. Its interracial love story made it a phenomenal hit and it put Hollywood on the map. The continued success of his productions led to the founding of Paramount Pictures with Lasky and Adolf Zukor. His first biblical epic, The Ten Commandments, was both a critical and financial success. It held the Paramount revenue record for 25 years. The immense popularity of Demolet's silent films enabled him to branch out. The Roaring Twenties were the boom years and DeMille took full advantage, opening the Mercury Aviation Company, one of America's first commercial airlines. He was also a real estate speculator, an underwriter of political campaigns, and a Bank of America executive, approving loans for other filmmakers. Demolet's films were distinguished by their epic scale and by his cinematic showmanship. He made silent films of every genre, social dramas, comedies, westerns, farces, morality plays, and historical pageants. The King of Kings, his biography of Jesus Christ, was acclaimed for its sensitivity. Although it was a silent film, it circulated in 16mm prints for more than a half century after its release, reaching more than 800 million viewers. The Sign of the Cross was the first sound film to integrate all aspects of cinematic technique. Cleopatra was his first film to be nominated for the Academy Award for Best Picture. After more than 30 years in Hollywood, DeMille reached the pinnacle of his career with Samson and Delilah, a biblical epic which did an all-time record business. He went on to receive his first nomination for the Academy Award for Best Director for his circus drama The Greatest Show on Earth which won the Academy Award for Best Picture. His last and most famous film, The Ten Commandments, is currently the seventh highest grossing film of all time adjusted for inflation. In addition to his Best Picture Award, he received an Academy Honorary Award for his film contributions, The Palm Door for Union Pacific, a DGA Award for Lifetime Achievement, and the Irving G. Thalberg Memorial Award. He was also the first recipient of the Golden Globe Cecil B. DeMille Award, which was later named in his honor. DeMille married Constance Adams DeMille in 1902, with whom he had one biological child, Cecilia, and three adopted children, Catherine, John, and Richard. DeMille had an older brother William. Their sister Agnes died in childhood. William later named a daughter after her, Agnes de Mille, the famed dancer-choreographer, was de Mille's niece. De Mille died of a heart ailment at age 77 in January 1959. De Mille name. There are several variants of de Mille's surname. His family's Dutch surname was originally spelled de Mille and then became de Mille. As an adult, he adopted the spelling de Mille for professional purposes but continued to use de Mille in private life. The family name de Mille was used by his children Cecilia, John, Richard, and Catherine. De Mille's brother William and his daughters, Margaret and Agnes, as well as De Mille's granddaughter, Cecilia De Mille Presley, also used the De Mille spelling, family, childhood, youth. Cecil Blunt De Mille was born in Ashfield, Massachusetts, while his parents were vacationing there, and grew up in Washington, North Carolina. His father, Henry Churchill de Mille, was a North Carolina-born dramatist and lay reader in the Episcopal Church, who had earlier begun a career as a playwright, writing his first play at age 15. His mother was Matilda Beatrice de Mille, whose parents were both of German-Jewish heritage. 
She emigrated from England with her parents in 1871 when she was 18, where they settled in Brooklyn. Beatrice grew up in a middle-class English household. Demolay's mother was related to British politician Herbert Lewis Samuel. Demolay's parents met as members of a music and literary society in New York. Henry was a tall, red-headed student. Beatrice was intelligent, educated, forthright, and strong-willed. They were both born in 1853 and both loved the theatre. When they married, Beatrice converted to Henry's faith. Henry worked as a playwright, administrator, and faculty member during the early years of the American Academy of Dramatic Arts. Established in New York City in 1884, he built a house for his family in Wayne, New Jersey. The family spent time in Pompton Lakes, New Jersey, operating a private school in that town and attending Christ Episcopal Church. DeMille recalled that this church was the place where he visualized the story of his 1923 version of the Ten Commandments. Henry read to his children nightly, both from the classics and from the Bible. DeMille studied scripture his entire life and read the Bible during lunch in the studio commissary. He was the first to admit that he did not attend church services but he did profess an unshakable belief in prayer. He stated that his films were a continuation of his father's work. My ministry, said DeMille, has been to make religious movies and to get more people to read the Bible than anyone else ever has. In 1893, at the age of 40, Henry DeMille contracted typhoid fever and died suddenly, leaving Beatrice with three children, a house, and no savings. Beatrice had enthusiastically supported her husband's theatrical aspirations. In his eulogy, she wrote, May your sons be as fine and as noble and good and honest as you were. May they follow in your steps. Within eight weeks of Henry's death, Beatrice opened an acting workshop in her home, the Henry C. The Mill School for Girls. She later became the second female playbroker on Broadway. DeMille attended Pennsylvania Military College in Chester, Pennsylvania from the age of 15. Both DeMille and his brother William also attended and graduated from the American Academy of Dramatic Arts, which they attended on scholarship. The Academy later honored DeMille with an Alumni Achievement Award. Career Broadway DeMille began his career as an actor on the Broadway stage in the theatrical company of Charles Froman in 1900. His brother William was establishing himself as a playwright and sometimes invited him to collaborate. DeMille performed on stage with actors whom he would later direct in films, Charlotte Walker, Mary Pickford, and Pedro de Cordoba. DeMille also produced and directed plays. DeMille found success in the spring of 1913 producing Reckless Age by Lee Wilson, a play about a high society girl wrongly accused of manslaughter starring Frederick Burton and Sidney Shields. DeMille and his brother at times worked with the legendary impresario David Belasco, who had been a friend and collaborator of their father. Changes in the theater rendered DeMille's melodramas obsolete before they were produced, and true theatrical success eluded him. By 1913 he was having difficulty supporting his wife and baby daughter. Moving pictures in July 1913 DeMille, Jesse Lasky, Sam Goldfish, and a group of East Coast businessmen created the Jesse L. Lasky Feature Play Company. On December 12, 1913, DeMille, his cast, and crew boarded a Southern Pacific train bound for Flagstaff via New Orleans. His tentative plan was to shoot a film in Arizona, but he disliked the quality of light he saw there. He continued to Los Angeles. Once there, he chose not to shoot in Edendale, where many studios were, but in Hollywood. He also flouted the dictum that a film should run 20 minutes. He made his first film run 60 minutes, as long as a short play. The Squaw Man, co-directed by Oscar Apfel, was a sensation and it established the Lasky Company. Silent Era The first few years of the Lasky Company were spent in making films non-stop, literally writing the language of film. DeMille adapted Belasco's dramatic lighting techniques to film technology. 
mimicking moonlight with Hollywood's first attempts at motivated lighting in the Warrens of Virginia after five years and 30 hit films. DeMille became Hollywood's most successful director. In the silent era, he was renowned for male and female, manslaughter, and the godless girl. DeMille's trademark scenes included bathtubs, lion attacks, and Roman orgies. A number of his films featured scenes in two-color Technicolor sound era when talking pictures were innovated in 1928. DeMille made a successful transition, offering his own innovations to the painful process. He devised a microphone boom and a soundproof camera blimp. He also popularized the camera crane. DeMille made stars of unknown actors. Gloria Swanson, B. Bay Daniels, Rod La Rock, William Boyd, Claudette Colbert, and Charlton Heston. He also cast established stars such as Gary Cooper, Robert Preston, Paulette Goddard, and Frederick March in multiple pictures. DeMille displayed a loyalty to his performers, casting them repeatedly. They included Henry Wilcoxon, Julia Fay, Joseph Schild Kraut, Ian Keith, Charles Bickford, Theodore Roberts, Akam Tamiroff and William Boyd. DeMille was credited by actor Edward G. Robinson with saving his career following his eclipse in the Hollywood blacklist. DeMille had a reputation for autocratic behavior on the set, singling out and berating extras who were not paying attention. A number of these displays were thought to be staged, however, an exercise in discipline. He despised actors who were unwilling to take physical risks, especially when he had first demonstrated that the required stunt would not harm him. This occurred with Victor Mature in Samson and Delilah. Mature refused to wrestle Jackie the Lion, even though DeMille had just tussled with the Lion, proving that he was tame. DeMille told the actor that he was 100% yellow. Paulette Goddard's refusal to risk personal injury in a scene involving fire in Unconquered cost her DeMille's favor and a role in The Greatest Show on Earth. DeMille was adept at directing thousands of extras, and many of his pictures include spectacular set pieces. The toppling of the pagan temple in Samson and Delilah, train wrecks in the road to yesterday, Union Pacific and the greatest show on earth, the destruction of an airship in Madame Satan, and the parting of the Red Sea in both versions of the Ten Commandments. DeMille first used three-strip Technicolor in Northwest Mounted Police. Audiences liked its highly saturated color, so DeMille made no further black-and-white features. Greatest showman, DeMille was respected by his peers, yet his individual films were sometimes criticized. Directorially, I think his pictures were the most horrible things I've ever seen in my life, said director William Wellman but he put on pictures that made a fortune. In that respect, he was better than any of us, producer David O. Selznick wrote. There has appeared only one Cecil B. DeMille. He is one of the most extraordinarily able showmen of modern times. However much I may dislike some of his pictures, it would be very silly of me, as a producer of commercial motion pictures to demean for an instant his unparalleled skill as a maker of mass entertainment. DeMille was one of the first directors to become a celebrity in his own right. He cultivated the image of the omnipotent director, complete with megaphone, riding crop, and jodhpurs. From 1936 to 1944, DeMille hosted Lux Radio Theatre, a weekly digest of current feature films. DeMille appeared as himself in numerous films, including the MGM comedy Free and Easy. He often appeared in his coming attraction trailers and narrated many of his later films, even stepping on screen to introduce the Ten Commandments. DeMille was immortalized in Billy Wilder's Sunset Boulevard when Gloria Swanson spoke the line, All right, Mr. DeMille, I'm ready for my close-up. DeMille plays himself in the film. In the 1940s DeMille continued to please the public. He averaged one film a year, most of them centered on historical figures or Bible stories. 
His first attempt at a drama set within a semi-documentary frame was The Greatest Show on Earth, a saga of circus performers released in 1952. His experiment gained him a nomination for Best Director and won an Oscar for Best Picture. The Ten Commandments in 1954, DeMille began his last film, the production for which he is best remembered, The Ten Commandments. On November 7, 1954, while in Egypt filming the Exodus sequence for The Ten Commandments, DeMille climbed a 107-foot ladder to the top of the massive Paramates set and suffered a serious heart attack. Ignoring his doctor's orders, DeMille was back directing the film within a week. Although DeMille completed the film, his health was diminished by several more heart attacks. This film would be his last unfulfilled projects because of his illness, DeMille asked his son-in-law, actor Anthony Quinn, to direct a remake of his 1938 film The Buccaneer. DeMille served as executive producer but could not improve Quinn's style of direction. Despite a cast led by Charlton Heston and Yul Brynner, the 1958 film The Buccaneer was a disappointment. In the months prior to his death, DeMille was researching a film biography of Robert Baden-Powell, first Baron Baden-Powell, the founder of the Scout movement. DeMille asked David Niven to star in the film, but it was never made. DeMille was also planning a film about the space race, as well as another biblical epic, this one about the Book of Revelation personal life. DeMille married Constance Adams on August 16, 1902 and had one child, Cecilia. The couple also adopted an orphan child, Catherine Lester in the early 1920s. Her father had been killed in World War I and her mother had died of tuberculosis. Without DeMille's permission, Catherine became an actress at Paramount Pictures, ultimately gaining his approval. On October 3, 1937, Catherine married actor Anthony Quinn. In the 1920s the DeMille's adopted two sons, John and Richard, the latter of whom became a notable filmmaker, writer, and psychologist. Politics DeMille was a lifelong conservative Republican activist. He greatly admired Herbert Hoover. In 1944, he was the master of ceremonies at the massive rally organized by David O. Selznick in the Los Angeles Coliseum in support of the Dewey Bricker ticket as well as Governor Earl Warren of California, who would become Dewey's running mate in 1948 and later the Chief Justice of the United States. The gathering drew 93,000, with short speeches by Hedda Hopper and Walt Disney. Among those in attendance were Anne Sothern, Ginger Rogers, Randolph Scott, Adolf Menjou, Gary Cooper, and Walter Pidgeon. Though the rally drew a good response, most Hollywood celebrities who took a public position sided with the Roosevelt Truman ticket. DeMille was a Freemason and a member of Prince of Orange Lodge No. 16 in New York City. In 1954, Secretary of the Air Force Harold E. Talbot asked DeMille for help in designing the cadet uniforms at the newly established United States Air Force Academy. DeMille's designs, most notably his design of the distinctive cadet parade uniform, won praise from Air Force and Academy leadership were ultimately adopted and are still worn by cadets. In the early 1950s, DeMille was recruited by Alan Dallas and Frank Wisner to serve on the board of the Anti-Communist National Committee for a Free Europe, the public face of the organization that oversaw the Radio Free Europe service, race and religion. DeMille drew on his Jewish and Protestant heritage to convey a message of tolerance. The Crusades was the first film to show a chord between Christians and Muslims. DeMille received more than a dozen awards from Jewish religious and cultural groups, including B. Nibirath. In 1954 he was seeking approval for a lavish remake of his 1923 silent film The Ten Commandments. He went before the Paramount Board of Directors, which was mostly Jewish-American. The members rejected his proposal, even though his last two films, Samson and Delilah and The Greatest Show on Earth, had been record-breaking hits. Adolf Zukor, the chairman of the board, rebuked the members, saying, 
We have just lived through a war where our people were systematically executed. Here we have a man who made a film praising the Jewish people, that tells of Samson, one of the legends of our scripture. Now he wants to make the life of Moses. We should get down on our knees to Cecil and say, thank you. DeMille did not have an exact budget proposal for the project, and it promised to be the most costly in Hollywood history. Still, the members unanimously approved it. Death. In the early hours of January 21, 1959, DeMille died of heart failure. DeMille's funeral was held on January 23 at St. Stephen's Episcopal Church. He was entombed at the Hollywood Memorial Cemetery. Legacy. DeMille received hundreds of awards, commendations, and honors in his lifetime. Posthumous honors for his contribution to the motion picture and radio industry. DeMille has two stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. The first, for radio contributions, is located at 6240 Vine Street. The second star is located at 1725 Vine Street. Two schools are named after him, Cecil B. DeMille Middle School in Long Beach, California, closed and demolished in 2007 to make way for a new high school, and Cecil B. DeMille Elementary School in Midway City, California. The former film building at Chapman University in Orange, California is named in honor of DeMille. The Lawrence and Christina Dodge College of Film and Media Arts now resides in Marion Knott Studios. The Golden Globe's annual Cecil B. DeMille Award recognizes lifetime achievement in the film industry.